My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, or I should say this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Of course, so my name is Jamila Palmin, and basically what I do is uh, I help women um, create multiple stream of uh, passive income through a luxury minimalistic lifestyle. So this is a that is cool. what I do. So yeah. I, saw, I saw one of your stories that you were reading the book Thinking Gorge, correct? Of course. I actually read it a couple of years ago, so I had to refresh uh, my mind a little bit. I know you had the picture of specialized knowledge. What can you tell us about that? Of specialized knowledge? <laughs> well, this is a good one. Um, the thing is, with specialized knowledge, uh, this is the best way to um, actually create riches, you know, actually create a, a big source of income because um, people actually need what you're doing for them. And you're helping them kind of skip a couple years of doing a lot of mistakes um, and, and suffering, <laughs> whatever, you know, comes with um, entrepreneurship. So this is why uh, specialized knowledge is, I mean, one of the key. <laughs> so, so what are some of the principles that you like from Thinking Gorge or you think people need to pay attention to? I think the part where it talks about um, self-suggestion, where you have to really um, implement in your daily life all the affirmations, I think this is really the basis. Um, you can try any type of plan and strategy, but if you don't have the right mindset, I know it sounds cliche, but if you don't have the right mindset, you cannot do anything. And so, yeah, so this is why I think it's one of the most important uh, chapter of this book. So if you read Thinking Gorge a couple of years ago, what have you been reading since then? Give us the name <laughs> of the books that you've been reading, because that's a long time for you not to read Thinking Gorge. Well, it, I actually read the book, I think it was three years ago, when I started applying the law of attraction in my life. Um, and after that, I think I just read a lot of uh, Robert Kiyosaki books. Um, I, I read a lot about uh, financial education and things like that, because that wasn't something that was in my, in my own education. So I think I just read a lot about uh, passive incomes in general. So if someone just starts their entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. how can we relate it to your story? What are some of the obstacles that they need to get over with so they can get into the, I call it the green zone, so now things are starting to pick up. Obviously, they're not millionaires yet, but they're on their way to get the success. What are some of the obstacles that we need to watch out, especially with social media and social and digital marketing to begin with? I think the worst thing is to really compare your story to someone else because everyone uh, is on a different path and a different journey. So you, you cannot compare yourself to someone who has a lot of years or knowledge, you know. Um, so I think this is really important. And for me, I think uh, the biggest part of my journey is that I really started with nothing, no knowledge at all. Um, and I don't think you have to hit rock bottom to actually start, you know, doing the work. But usually, you know, it starts from there because you're kind of, kind of tired of everything. You know, you just want a different life, a different, you know, you just want to enjoy life. You know, you don't want to be a slave to whatever, you know paycheck or anything you know so this is why i think it's it's really important i mean i'm cool with paycheck as long as the paycheck makes things go around of course and, and, if, you're, and if you're happy about it. but i mean my challenge with entrepreneurship is that a lot of individuals think it's easy and it's really not easy i think it's the fault yeah. of a lot of people that have made it where they make it look easy yeah. with fancy pictures, private jet, homes, this. So you show that luxuriness of it, but a lot of times you don't show the sleepless nights. You don't show that, you know, for maybe six months, one year, five years, I don't know, you were living in a little one-bedroom apartment, for say, or you didn't have the luxury backyard that you wanted. So I think a lot of that, it gets like from the beginning, and then we skip the middle, and we just go to the end. And then... People don't see the the, 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 the the process in the middle, so now they just want the end result, and the end result takes time. Of course. 
But usually what happens is that when you shift your, your mindset, it doesn't take a lot of time from that point. Well, that, well, that was my story because I feel like for most of my life I was poor, you know, and when I really started uh, having daily rituals with the law of attraction or whatever, you know, just starting with affirmation and self-confidence, there wasn't really a big time uh, after that, you know, I started having results. But yeah, of course, we, we don't really see, you know, people don't share their failures most of the time. So, I mean, it's kind I, they, of they never show their failures because yeah. if they show their failures, Listen, showing, I feel like this is what's going on in the news also too. Mm -hmm. Like negative news sells. If it's not, if it's positive, there's not that much people are like, oh, okay. So that's why you see in news, you see so much negative stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Now, there are valid things that are happening to people, you know, fire, earthquake, hurricane, this, COVID-19, this, yeah. You know, people doing crazy things to each other. All of these craziness, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like that's the same thing with entrepreneurship. If you put the negative stuff out there, you may not get the audiences that you want because it's not sexy anymore. But I mean, you can share a little bit. I like to share some of my failures that I actually overcame uh, just to show that even if it was... Share with us one. What was one of your failures? I'm interested to know. I have a lot From of your that. Instagram page, it does not look like you have gone through any failures. So let's just get one at least. Okay, just one. I mean, I have so many to choose from anyway. So one of my failures, I would say, was to live um, paycheck by paycheck. And what happened with that is that when I started my own blog, um, <laughs> what happened is that a couple years, I think it was two years or three years after I started my blog, um, and I wrote so many blog posts on it. Um, I actually lost my job because I was fired, whatever. I mean, they had to let people go because you know, of money, anything. And so what happened there is that I actually lost my whole blog that I built for like, I think it was three years of content. Um, wow. And that was hard. That was, that was really hard. And because I had to start from scratch, but what, ha what happened with that is that I actually learned um, how to start back again, you know, and I, I kind of realized, okay, I'm not dead, you know, I, I still have two hands, I still have my brain, <laughs> I just have to do it all over again, but in a more smart way, you know, and so that yeah. was, I would say, I, was I think you learn a lot from failures, I think, of course. I think it gives you humility, it gives you, it opens up your eyes, and I kind of <laughs> think that a lot of times, it yeah. shows us that we're capable of doing more. Of course. That we didn't believe in ourselves enough. Like we do. We, we, so, yeah. so here's my other question. You said mm -hmm. law, of, law of attraction. A lot of people confuse law of attraction mm -hmm. with no work and no action. So what is your definition of law of action, you know, law of attraction? Because I can't even say law of attraction anymore. The law of attraction. Because, yeah, I'm like, if you don't do work, if you're just yeah. sitting at home, how, what are you going to attract? Like, that's a little bit, so you, I'll let you explain what that means. Uh, well, it means a lot of things, but basically you have to um, take, after doing all the affirmation and everything, you have to take aligned actions, of course, because no one is going to hand you a million dollars if you're just standing in your living room and you're, you're not doing anything, right? You have to create something. You have to give value. You have to create. You have to, to be yourself. Um, but you have to take action, of course. You know, no one is going to give you uh, what you want just by not working. What are the two hardest things to start your own blog? What's the two most difficult things about starting a blog? Because I think it's easy, but I'm pretty sure I don't know about it. So enlighten me. If I want to open a blog, what are the two hardest things? It's not that hard to actually start it, you know? Um, I remember just selling a couple things just to have the money to like actually start my blog and buy the hosting and blah, blah, blah. And I had to learn everything from YouTube videos. And so um, I think the hardest thing is just, it's just being consistent. And because some weeks, you know, some days you just don't feel like it. And because you don't have someone telling you to do it, you have to learn um, how to be disciplined. And this is, the, this is the challenge here. And you have to, Kind of create a system or, uh, behind it even if it's just a fashion blog 
or even an Instagram page, you know? Which is, which is, which is, my, which is my next question. What yeah. does a blogger do? A blogger? <laughs> Right, because I right. feel like a lot of people do fashion blogs, but we don't understand what actual blogging means. Like, what do you what What are things that you think the elite bloggers do, and how do consumers benefit from a blog post? Well, a blog is pretty much kind of a journal or a magazine, right? You you kind of share experiences, products. Well, now it's mostly products now, and so it is different from a magazine because you kind of have this relationship with the blogger right you have um i don't know how to say that like a trusting you know relationship with them and you kind of you, you learn to to know them the year so it it's more intimate than just you know buying from like a tv ad or you know a magazine so there's a lot of work just, behind uh, a blogger, blogger so, okay so do usually blog bloggers write about products that they're like kind of uh, inspired by or they like or they just write about everything well i mean they now nowadays it's more it's basically a business so you know a lot of bloggers just um they have to to try the products of course and and really you know decide if they want to talk about it and if they want to then it becomes you know there's a contract and everything so this is you know basically what a blogger you know has so reality check for people if they want to be a blogger from point from the moment you start and yeah. if you do things right how long does it take before you get the results that you think is sufficient <laughs> is there a six month why are you laughing <laughs> is it a six months process is it like a one because i feel like a lot of people they underestimate the amount of work and energy that is required to launch any type of business. I'm not just talking about blogging, it's mm -hmm. just like we're using that as an example. I feel like they underestimate mm -hmm. how much time it goes into it and the effort that's required. Well, there's a lot of effort and you cannot just sit there and actually, you know, do it for the money. Because if you do it for the money, you're gonna be, I mean, it's not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. And I even have a YouTube channel and that was also the same type of, um, of word behind it and i remember my youtube channel the first year i had zero views the whole the whole year so i was basically talking to myself you know and i was like hi guys you know but there's there's no one you know but i knew eventually I, I, I know exactly what you feel because that's how mine is but you want to know something <laughs> i saw that the first month and i was like okay they're gonna come i saw that second month it was pretty embarrassing <laughs> third month it was very lame because when i talk in real life, a lot of people listen. And then going into this vacuum and there was nobody. But you know what? After a while, I said, you know what? I'm going to have this conversation between myself. As long as I'm enjoying it, it's cool if they're there or not. I'm just going to do what I need to do. So even if it's one person watching it, it's one person. But I'm not going to go based on the metrics. And so, and that's what I've been wanting to do. I'm probably going to do it this week or next week. I don't know. i got to talk to the team. I'm actually going to put a post on Instagram. I'm mm -hmm. going to literally say, we don't give a shit about likes anymore. So if mm -hmm. you want to like it, like it. If you don't want to like it, just consume the content. You don't exactly. even have to spend that one second even liking it. Like, I really don't care anymore. Like, I'm over it. Like, I'm putting the content that I like. If you exactly. want to join and watch it, you don't need to let me know that you're on that side because I'm doing it for me first. Mm -hmm. And then you get to enjoy it if you like. If not, then I'm totally fine. So, that's what it is. But yeah, so zero views. Really, it was that bad? Zero views? What were you saying on the videos? I mean, it was just... Now it's working. Now I have views. But <laughs> I basically do a lot of, um, of um, minimalism videos. A lot of videos about how to apply um, the law of attraction through cleaning your whole house and things like that, you know? So it's really precise. So I knew I, I had to... You know, take a little bit of time, of course, before people catch up, you know, on this type of content. But I liked it and it was me. So, I mean, I didn't do it for the for the money or for views at the beginning, of course, because, you yeah, know. Don't talk to my wife. She's going to tell me to go clean the house. You and my <laughs> wife cannot have conversations, okay? Like, we cannot have that. <laughs> I, I kind of think, like, I treat the house like a hotel. I just show up, do what I need to do. <laughs> 
Like, I don't need much, and I think I'm one of those guys that, like, it's cool. I, I would like to have things, but then if I don't, as long as I got a bed, one shower, like, I'm cool. Like, everything else is, like, it's cool. Not that I don't enjoy it, but I'm just, like, I know how to survive on the minimum, too, and I'd be happy with the minimum. Exactly. Which makes a lot of sense. I mean, you don't need that much to be happy. And you kind of realize this when, I mean, I remember when I started making a little bit more money and I started buying things. I mean, it, it didn't make me like happier, you know, and it's weird because you kind of have to experience it, bef you know, you know, before to understand it, you know. And so um, this is when I actually started getting back to my roots and I was just like, you know, let, let's just keep it simple. But with lux with a little bit of luxury too, because you want to be comfortable. You know, you don't want to <laughs> sleep on the floor. Um, I actually slept on the floor when I got <laughs> my first apartment, and I was so excited. I moved in prematurely. I thought <laughs> I didn't know. I was like 20 years old. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I was 19, 20 somewhere around. I think it was like 20 or something. Mm -hmm. And then my mom lived in the valley. I went to the LA, and yeah. I wanted to be close to my business, so I rented mm -hmm. an apartment. And I didn't know that it doesn't come with the gas, water, power connected. I thought it's all connected. You just move in, yeah. right? I didn't. Nobody told me. So I go in and I'm like, shower. First morning, there's no hot water coming. And I didn't know you had to connect. So I took shower, cold showers for three days. I slept <laughs> on the floor for a few days. It was, it was not fun at all. But I did it because I was like, okay, this is mine. Like, You're nobody playing. can come to this space. I get to do what I want to do. So I think it was, like, the excitement after that. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I got to go home. Got to go see parents. Got to go over there, shower, do all the stuff. Mm -hmm. When the power is back, I'll come back. But you, <laughs> again, you have to experience it if yes. you don't. Us talking about it, I don't think it does no. that whole thing. Anyway, tell us how people can find you. So people can find me uh, on my blog. So it's basically my name, jamilapaulman.com or Instagram, jampaulman. So Instagram is my favorite, my favorite platform. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's my favorite. It's all right. It's cool. I like Instagram too. <laughs> anyway, listen, thank you. so are you going to do, so what chapter of Thinking Grow Rich are you in right now? I mean, I, I read the whole thing. But so, when you're going back, what you, are, are you going randomly or are you going ch from chapter one all the way down? Yeah, I go from chapter one all the way down and then I like to read all of, I mean, all over it. <laughs> okay. I like mixes. I, I, I've gone through it multiple times, obviously, but I typically like to open them wherever it ends up. I, I stay that chapter. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So when you finish it up, if you want to hit us up and we'll do another video where we do summaries because I think there are a lot of the principles that yeah. need to be focused, but I don't want to do one whole long video on the whole mm -hmm. thing. I think it loses it. Then we got to do yeah. chapter by chapter, but the specialized knowledge is very, very important. Yeah, Doctors, so attorneys, they're all specialized knowledge and they make their money like that. And mm -hmm. at the same time, it helps a lot of families. Thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning, You're this welcome. afternoon. Hopefully, we'll get to do a lot more. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you got to talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.